Here is the complete breakdown of Boys Season 4 Episode 5. This episode is packed with twists and turns, so let's dive into the key moments, character developments, and hidden details that make this episode stand out. This episode features an engaging mission for the boys, tying into various ongoing character arcs. Seeing characters like Butcher, Starlight and Mother's Milk working together with Victoria Newman and Star and Edgar is exciting. Unlikely alliances often bring a lot of interest to the show. This week's focus is on a soup-killing virus developed at Godalkin University. This virus was introduced in Gen V and Butcher has kept it secret from the rest of the group. Newman currently holds all remaining doses. Despite her power, she isn't as powerful as Homelander, making her a potential test subject. Butcher and Mother's Milk managed to secure a presidential pardon for Stan Edgar, Newman's adopted father. They need his help to locate the virus. It is good to see Giancarlo Esposito return, especially with more emphasis on the character's comedic side. Edgar's neat freak tendencies and villainous nature fit well within Esposito's range. His smug and snotty demeanor adds humor, particularly when he calls out Newman's hypocrisy and refers to the boys as cannon fodder. Edgar leads the group to his country home, where Newman has established a lab to test the virus on animals dosed with Compound V. However, the virus and top vout scientist Samir Shah, who is also the father of Newman's daughter Zoe, are gone. When Newman and her team intercept everyone at the farm, it becomes clear they're all after the same thing. They agree to a ceasefire to avoid further conflict. This temporary peace allows the characters to address their interpersonal issues. Edgar and Newman discuss their complicated history, particularly their decisions to dose a child with Compound V. Newman taunts Annie about her struggles with her identity outside of her starlight persona. Frenchie and Kimiko refuse to talk about their violent past, despite the likelihood of mutual empathy. Newman also reveals the deal she made with Butcher back in the season's premiere, though Butcher points out he did not follow through with it. The story takes a wild turn when it delves into a B-movie thriller involving farm animals that have become dangerous due to demonic enhancements. One chicken can shoot through people's chests, and there are sheep that can fly and tear a bull apart in midair in mere seconds. The group finds Samir hiding in a barn and learns that Compound V leaked in the groundwater after a superpowered hamster escaped. Now, there is only one dose of the virus left. To save themselves from these terrifying creatures, they inject the virus into a dead man and feed him to the animals. During the chaos, Samir disappears, leaving behind only a leg. Eric Krepke, the creator, plans to end this series after five seasons. Occasionally, there are glimpses of a version that could extend longer. This is particularly evident in the episode, especially during the farm scenes. There is plenty of plot movement, and in the final scene, Butcher and Kessler secretly take Samir away to create more of the virus. They chop off his leg to make everyone think he's dead. The isolated setting and episodic nature makes one imagine a more procedural version of the show. This version could have characters shuffled into new groups for different missions each week, while offering political satire relevant to current American politics. Although it wouldn't be the tight, purposeful story that The Boys is known for, an episode like this suggests it could work. Despite the joy from the thrilling farm story, the show also dives into a grim storyline with Hugh Sr. The storyline isn't negative, but rather a disturbing angle on superpowers in this universe. Simon Pegg's performance conveys panic, confusion, sadness, and violent anger effectively. Compound V saves Hugh's life but doesn't fix his brain issues. Being a superpowered individual is dangerous when one cannot control their actions. This is evident when Hugh accidentally kills three innocent bystanders at the hospital. He doesn't consciously decide to phase his hand through someone's chest to rub their heart out, it happens involuntarily. The story then shifts to Huey who is facing a tough decision about his father. Huey's dad is very sick and doesn't want to suffer like their old cat Jar Jar who had leukemia. When Huey was nine, he didn't want his dad to put Jar Jar down even though the cat's quality of life had dropped a lot. Hugh Sr., Huey's dad wants to avoid a similar fate for himself. That's why he gave medical power to Daphne, not Huey. This showed that Hugh Sr. didn't trust Huey to make that hard choice. Over time, Huey has changed. This change is probably because of the many tough experiences he has had fighting Vout, the powerful company. Last week, Huey showed he could make the right decision when it mattered. This was a big step for him. 
Giving his dad the euthanasia drug was a way to show that he had learned to do what was necessary, even when it was painful. The episode focuses a lot on the boys. It's a nice break from the usual scenes filled with Homelander. Homelander is in this episode too, but he plays a smaller role. His behavior is different from usual, even though his goals haven't changed. At the end of season 3, Ryan, a young character, chose Homelander over Butcher. This led to a new subplot. Homelander starts teaching Ryan to believe he is superior to others. This is the beginning of Ryan's potential turn towards evil. We see both the bad and sometimes good sides of life at Vought Tower, the headquarters of the powerful and corrupt Vought Company. Ryan's father was awful and violent, but this episode shows that sometimes the power at Vought Tower can seem attractive. Ryan wants to help people genuinely. He doesn't want to be part of fake hero acts. Surprisingly, Homelander supports this. He gives Ryan a mission to deal with Adam Burke, a director and a physical harasser. Burke has been flirting with a production assistant nonstop and wants Ryan to be in a bad teen show called Super School. Homelander's influence leads Ryan to turn down the acting job and instead make sure Burke faces consequences. Ryan orders the PA to slap Burke and she does it without hesitation. Huey learns to make tough decisions for the right reasons, showing his maturity. Meanwhile, Ryan's journey is shaped by Homelander's teachings, which could lead him down a dark path. The episode gives a break from the usual heavy focus on Homelander, allowing more depth in other characters' stories. The V-52 Expo is filled with humor and satire. It makes fun of Marvel announcements and highlights the shallow diversity efforts of some companies. One example is the long list of planned movies from phases 7 through 19. There is also Firecracker's first Christian film under the new Vought Fate division. Another example is A-Train's very costly biopic. The Black Added Initiative is especially cynical. It calls Black Seven members articulate heroes and changes movies based on the viewer's race. Characters from Gen V like Kate Dunlap and Sam Riordan also appear. They are now very loyal to Homelander. There is a bit of hope in this otherwise dark story. A-Train and Ashley, who have been without for a long time, join forces. They frame Cameron Coleman as a leak and get him killed. This comes after Coleman dumps Ashley following her demotion. This alliance could help the boys in their fight against Homelander's plans. The boys are in a tough spot. One of them is grieving, another is in jail, and their leader is dying while carrying out unauthorized missions. They need all the help they can get to stand a chance against Homelander. Then, Kimiko wants to start a conversation with Frenchie. However, Frenchie decides to turn himself in at the police station and confess to murder. He explained to Annie earlier that he believes being forgiven is a luxury no one can afford and that some sins deserve eternal damnation. Meanwhile, Edgar is sent back to prison because they failed to get their virus. We see Newman using her powers to kill her driver. It's unclear what role Edgar will play moving forward, but it's definitely something to keep an eye on. Janine has been picking up some wrong lessons from her dad. She thinks that fighting is a way to solve problems. M.M. knows this but doesn't get the chance to talk to her about it in this episode. It's a reminder of how children can be influenced by their parents' actions, even if unintentionally. Sage seems to suspect that A-Train is the leak. Her suspicion is clear in her behavior. There's also a moment with Cameron Coleman discussing elevating BIPOC voices, which seems out of character for him. This suggests that the show sometimes mixes far-right characters with fake, liberal institutions, creating confusing analogies. Butcher appears disturbed by a rabbit affected by Temp V that he released. The rabbit's tentacles explode, which is disturbing to see. This could be connected to Butcher's own struggles and blackouts, and his reaction hints at a deeper connection to his current condition. Stan's comment about the character's survival is noteworthy. He says, It's an absolute wonder to me that you all managed to live this long. In a touching moment, Hugh calls his son, My Wee Huey, during his final moments. This ties back to the comics and adds emotional depth to Huey's story. However, questions remain about where Huey's mom fits into the story now. With these developments, Huey's storyline for the season might be wrapping up. So whatever your thoughts are, just write them down below and don't forget to smash that subscribe button for more such content.